just the group of us. Maybe we'll go through a short round of introductions first, and then we'll get started with the voting party. So I'm Tamara, the program manager at Common Stack, and i um, very excited to see um, both of you here today. And uh, I'll pass to Ivy to uh, introduce herself as well. Sounds good. And maybe we'll pass to Will to introduce the whole clan. Yeah. Hey, I'm Will Redick, I'm the founder of Grassroots Economics, and um, we are here in Kilifi, uh, Kenya, and uh, I'm joined with our Through a little loud, I mean, a little uh, fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah. Is this any better now? Test, test, test. Yeah, that's a lot better. Test, test. Yeah, that's Is it better? Better. Okay, I mean, I had it up too. Cool. All right, okay. how about now? Let's try that. Yeah. yeah. I, I heard you introduce yourself, but I didn't hear the introductions of the other people. The audio is too disturbed. Sorry, I'm here. Hi, uh, my, name is, my name is Jambi. I'm the program admin yeah. at Grassroots Economics Foundation. Hi, I'm one of the devs working with Grassroots Economics. So one of the devs working with grassroots economics. Cool. Right. Thanks. Nice to meet everyone. And uh, Joseph, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Just an introduction, not yet the nomination yet. Sure. Hey, everyone. My name is Joseph, and I'm the managing director at Precious Plastic. And I'm calling in from Portugal. Cool. Uh, and maybe, uh, Chris, would you like to introduce yourself next? Sure. Hey, everyone. My name is Chris Burns. Um, I'm part of the Trusted Seed and General Counsel at an entity called Copyleft Cultivars um, and have nominated the Open Cultivars Commons here. Um, I'm talking to you from just north of Madrid, Spain. Awesome. And Grael, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Uh, microphone check. Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we hear you loud and clear. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, calling in from the Philippines uh, with Todao. Cool. Okay. All right. So um, maybe I just want to share one thing. We have some breaking news. Uh, the Kernel program, I don't know if everyone is familiar with it. It is like onboarding into Web3. It's an extraordinary program. Um, they have withdrawn from the nomination. They were in fourth place. Uh, and they withdrew because they have a short-term goal to raise funds immediately. And that was going to be in conflict with the longer deployment of a commons. So they decided to withdraw so that the votes could be recast to other to other nominations since they weren't going to be able to um, to follow through if they did win the prize or uh, or were uh, made it to the finalists just to, to pass that on. And um, they are fundraising. So if anyone knows uh, how they can support Kernel Fundraising, it is a truly, truly incredible program. So um, today we're going to cover grassroots economics, precious plastics, open cultivars, and Tudel. And um, I'm just going to share a quick intro about the, um, the Commons Prize. Um, let me share my screen. So, okay. So uh, here's where we are on our timeline. Um, we are at the final, the 
the uh, finishing of round one, which will end Sunday evening. And that will eventually uh, essentially be the short list of finalists who will then go into um, the, uh, the final round for the community, the winning community who will work with Common Stack to deploy a commons. Um, the project manager for Commons Prize is Usama, so feel free to reach out to him with any questions or myself or anyone on the Commons Stack team. Or if you have questions, uh, I think the best place to share them is also the Commons Prize channel, so everyone is aware of, of the questions as well. And then just a uh, comment on how to vote. Uh, it seems like everyone is already familiar with this, but for anyone who's watching this video later and isn't so sure, uh, the uh, the address is uh, token log XYZ slash common dash stack slash commons prize. And to vote for a, um, to vote for, uh, so you could open up the nomination and watch the nomination video, uh, read through the nomination itself, leave any comments or questions you might have for the community. And if you decide to vote for that community, you would uh, simply click on it and uh, and choose the amount of votes that you want to place. Um, it is quadratic voting, so uh, the voting power is the square of how many votes actually get submitted for that um, for that uh, nomination. So, if you want to cast five votes for a project, it would uh, you would have to um, stake twenty five uh, trust tokens um, on that on that. Um, proposal or on that uh, nomination. So uh, the way we're going to uh, host this session is um, to uh, just give everyone four or five minutes to present their nomination and talk about their community. Um, I think we will uh, have a question and round, a question and answer round at the end. I definitely encourage anyone, you know, we have questions for each other to drop your questions in the Commons Prize, but I'll also open the floor so we could talk about it together um, at the end of the presentations. So um, I think, uh, I don't know, Will, do you have, were you ready to do your sort of presentation of grassroots economics and uh, the community and what the Commons Prize means to this community? Um, so, so Grassroots Economics is a it's a nonprofit foundation, um, which is basically a company limited by guarantee right now. And and what we've done is we've built a sort of a framework that we call like a Grassroots Economic Commons uh, framework for communities to develop instruments like uh, community currencies. Um, and basically, they're coming together as a commons of service. So there's a there's a bunch of businesses or you know uh, groups in a village that come together and they offer uh, services into a common pool. And that pool is denominated um, in a uh, credit obligation. Um, and so it's essentially like a voucher that's redeemable as payment for that common pool. And um, those vouchers are are basically little contracts that can change hands and, and act also like a currency. And then we've done some work on the smart contracts of those as well, so that they have demurrage built into them, so that there's a, a kind of a gradual expiration that goes into a community pool, um, which right now is is really just handled by like the community treasurer and sort of raise of hand type voting. And we don't really have any sort of, um, you know, we have a lot of legal contracts that we've made sort of on paper, and there's a lot of like hand raising systems. Um, in terms of you know how people are doing voting, and it's not very transparent, and it doesn't work that well um, as as well as it could, anyways. And so we're really excited about sort of like you know using blockchain technology to sort of commonsify and sort of DAOify, if you will, uh, some of these structures. So like the you know the the community architecture when they create their their commons, their, their service commons. What does that look like in terms of them signing these contracts like on chain? all the parameters for those contracts, uh, being able to change those parameters in the future, like increasing the supply over time and things like that. And then also voting on where the um, where the common pool of uh, expired vouchers goes as well, like for community projects. That's that's kind of like the, you know, the minimum we would love to see come out of this is just, uh, you know, getting some help and learnings on some best practices of that and ideally develop a lot of those smart contracts 
so it's very easy to deploy. Um, and and then also ultimately, like for us as an like in terms of our our own sustainability model and like how we offer our own our own services, like fitting us into that as well. Um, I don't know. I maybe Jambi can just say a few words around like how we work with communities right now in like Katui or yeah. You know. So we um, target existing uh, and then we just introduce um, these commons. So um, it's easy, even when we leave, we, we, we know that um, they'll continue benefiting. So, so far we have um, three groups um, that are ready, that have been joined and um, that are now um, starting to use um, commons in their community. Yeah. I mean, we have over like and users, but now they're starting to create their own vouchers, right? They've been using some of ours in the past, and we've gone through this kind of two-year code rewrite. We built our own blockchain as well. Um, it's an EVM uh, sidechain. And um, so there's there's a lot going on right now of these tools, but they're still not really, like, using them with systems and all the other parts of that need to be there for common. So I feel like we've got sort of, like, a few pieces of the puzzle and like just need to connect it all together. So yeah. I think that's it. Any okay, over and out. Thanks guys. Cool, thanks. I think I learned when you move the laptop is when the uh, the noise gets introduced to the audio. I think that's thanks. Thanks. Sorry about that. Thanks for that. We'll really, really appreciate that. And grassroots economics is leading the uh, the, nom the uh, nominations right now, leading in votes. Okay, so um, I uh, have a bunch of questions, but we'll save them for the end, and maybe we can move next to uh, Joseph and Precious Plastics. And um, you have five minutes to present Precious Plastics and um, what. Um, benefit you think uh, the precious plastics community and the world will have from um, having a precious plastics commons? Sure, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so Precious Plastic is a open hardware platform that enables people to start their own plastic recycling projects anywhere in the world. And we're, we're about, yeah, about 10 years old. It was started by a Dutch designer. And as part of his graduation project for design school, he just designed some small-scale plastic recycling machines that would enable people to yeah, start tackling the plastic waste problem. Because the machines that we that are out there for plastic recycling are really large scale, they're expensive, and they're they're really about centralized infrastructure. And so he wanted to create small-scale machines that we could really decentralize the production process. Uh, in the recycling process and put it the power in the hands of people. And the project, uh, yeah, so it just started as one guy. He just made some machines. He put the open source designs online. Uh, and then a community just started to grow around the project. And so people started replicating the machines. And, and then every few years, we would do a, a next version of the project. So we would bring volunteers together and design some new machines. Some, um, also new, some new digital platforms to help connect our community. Because we've always had this, this concept from the beginning that you know, the plastic waste problem is bigger than anyone or any one company or any one nonprofit's ability to, to solve it. So we really need a, a myriad of solutions. And we've done that by just empowering people to create their own solutions and then share those back with the, with the community. So yeah, over the years, the, the community really grew to like hundreds of organizations that use our technology, use the um, machines, the products. Also, we create product, open source products that people use uh, or create with machines. And um, it's just a really like wonderful like community feeling with Precious Plastic. There's these people who are making um, you know small businesses from the open source technology. There's people who are educating. There's people that are just donating to their local precious plastic organization. And, um, you know, it's a really powerful community that was almost built for Web3 before Web3 existed. Um, in the sense that, yeah, it's very decentralized. There's people all over the world using the technology. And yet, there's when we started to, as we got through this project, 
there was two really big problems that we have. One is incentive and alignments within the community. Because when people start to, let's say, for example, sell these open source machines, then there's, there can be a sort of competitive um, sense amongst different machine builders. So there's machine builders in our community that just sell and that's how they make their business. And we want a collaborative experience between the machine builders. We, we don't want them to be competing with each other because we are trying to get away from a simple market economics. So we're trying to think about how do we incentivize our community to develop the technology further and then share it back with everyone so that we can build our commons, which is our open source uh, intellectual property. How do we improve the commons and manage the commons because the commons also needs management. The other big problem that we've had over the years is our own sustainable funding mechanism. So we've, yeah, for most of the project, it was simply uh, supported by small grants and individual donations. We have about 700 people that donate to us on a monthly basis through Patreon. Uh, and then we've had you know, various grants and such. But really, it hasn't been a sustainable organization ourselves. And, and there's so much that we can do. Um, and we, now we have a small team, but we, we really think you know, this problem, doesn't, we need way more resources to be able to fight this problem. So yeah, we're trying to be able to create a, a sustainable funding mechanism for us that can be make us more impactful. And that's when actually the ABC, the, the augmented bonding curve, makes a lot of sense because it, it, in a way it's like kind of like a donation to us, but we want people to be able to know where that donation is going and then have power over how that donation is spent. Um, and that's how we can build more effective uh, development so we can get towards the plastic waste problem more effectively and more efficiently. That's why we started looking at the commons stack, because we have this existing commons that we need to manage and fund. And you guys have created this really interesting funding mechanism um, and support structure, you know, not just the funding part, but also the support structure around the conviction voting, etc. And as somebody who's a huge fan of Eleanor Ostrom, Tam, I know you are as well. I watched some of your lectures. Uh, she spoke to my class when I was at university. And it's just, yeah, we want to be able to manage this. this. So that's why we found the common stack and really fell in love and we're excited about this um, prize. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you must have a timer set because on the nose, five minutes. <laughs> I don't know if that, was, if that was by design or by accident, but that was very impressive. Cool. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Joseph. And um, Precious Plastics is currently number three. Uh, it's been in the top five as well since the very beginning. Uh, okay, so I also have a bunch of questions after that presentation too. Um, if anyone wants to ask questions uh, for any of the nominations in the room today, uh, please do drop a question in the Commons Prize channel so that we can ask at the end of this call. Um, uh, perhaps you'd like to go next to Chris Burns and introduce Open Cultivars DAO and uh, maybe talk a little bit about um, Open Cultivars and uh, what it would mean to the community to have this cultural and technical design patterns to support this uh, community into a commons. Great. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so the, the Open cultivars uh, commons really sort of grows out of the the tradition of open source software um, you know that of course kind of pioneered the use of of copyright law in a way that really kind of hacks the copyright law system by changing the default rules away from exclusion and, and into inclusion um, and that sort of movement has evolved in some ways to now have a, a new organization and, and many in the community, um, that organization being called Organization for Ethical Source, and others many <clears throat> in the software community have begun to debate whether or not ethical encumbrances should attach to the copyright license, really, to the software license, or really to sort of inform as a means of sort of through contract enforcement um, some type of ethical commitment inside of the commons. Um, so with that sort of evolution of law and everything in mind, um, and separately, growing trend of um, sort of 
arguments and, and uh, evolution of copyright law to likely lead to the situation where engineering, especially of plant genomics when one's making cultivars, can be protected as copyright and they sort of under the exact same logic as software, whereas software's programming a silicon chip um, at some level, uh, genetic engineering is sort of programming um, a plant cultivar, a cell. And it, while the law is somewhat uncertain on this, most, most think this is where this is heading. And so what Open Cultivars Commons does is kind of take the, this application of the open source movement and apply it to um, really to, to sort of plant cultivars beginning with the creation of an open source sort of like digital seed bank that will help sort of register, open, curate, and maintain a lot of genomic data, making sure that remains a public good, and then licensing out um, sort of the, the genetic material in an open source way. Um, growing emphasis and, and interest in, in thinking, especially around how to use common stack tooling to manage these sort of governance of ethical encumbrances. Um, this is the ethical encumbrance piece, which for plant cultivars may be anything from of conditioning the, the um, use of that seed in the supply chain to not have any child labor or sort of name uh, these other uh, typically human rights or economic rights that people seek, but negative externalities in the global economy have created we can recapture those negative externalities, we think, with innovative uses of the augmented bonding curve and with some innovative token engineering that, again, is sort of floated on this IP asset as a value that um, can be made fairly liquid inside of a commons, especially as that commons relates to an outer world that's not part of the commons and has this friction of ethical sort of conditions alongside you know, whatever economic alignments we would put through taxation. Um, so anyways, I, I'll pause there. Um, one other qu kind of question I have is, I mean, we, I don't think, you know, we have a, a real shot at even making it to second round voting, um, just given where things stand. But we're, of course, really excited and interested in all of these projects. Um, and we're just wondering if there's been discussion around how to, you know, perhaps allow further opportunities for either some of these initiatives to kind of merge at some point into another, um, or just how maybe we can stay in touch and figure out if there's complementarity in across some of these initiatives, if there's a way to kind of collaborate in, in a way that makes sense, obviously for Common Stack and, and the prize, but just kind of wanted to float it um, more out of support and, and interest for whoever wins this uh, than anything. So thank you. Uh, thank, uh, thank you so much, uh, Chris. That was. Um, I'm going to answer your questions now, though. Maybe we'll just take a moment to pause for that. Uh, so, uh, for the first thing, Grael has a proposal for merging uh, a handful of commons. I don't know if you're one of the the nominations that uh, that is involved in in that discussion right now, uh, and maybe he can propose it sort of towards the end of this call. And secondly. Um, you know, this is a prize, uh, and basically what that means is that, you know, the Common Stack team is doing this pro bono and um, sharing the tools and will be, you know, helping customize some of the dashboards for the community and, um, you know, uh, communicating with the trusted seed for the co-vestment opportunities for the trusted seed to co-vest into this new commons. And so um, the, the prize is sort of... Uh, this work. However, uh, our intention is to um, document these protocols, this manual for how to deploy a commons and make that open source. All of the tools are already open source. So there would be no uh, restrictions from a community who wanted to embark on this on their own to take these protocols, take the open the open source software and, and sort of follow the, these patterns. Um, on, on their own without the help of Common Stack. And we're shooting for uh, Q4 to be able to um, provide this as a kind of service for some communities. So to aid some communities uh, along the, the journey to deploy commons. And that uh, is something that is not prepared yet. 
And we'd really want to just stay focused on this next commons and put all of our intention and effort into that. And then uh, with these protocols that we're developing, um, help other communities uh, as well. Okay, and speaking of uh, Grariel, you're up next with Tadao. Tadao? Did I get it right? Todao. Todao, Todao. I have to remember. Yeah. Think the, 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 they call them Todas in the Philippines, so it's Todao. Cool. Um, All right. Let's bring up so, uh, Todao. Go ahead. Todao, you yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I've been in a few voting parties now, so so I, uh, I've, I've got lots of videos about it already, but it's pretty simple. Um, Basically, uh, there's a fellow in Quezon City, not far from here in the Philippines, who's invented a device that you can install on a motorcycle in the carburetor, and uh, it'll, it'll basically uh, reduce your fuel consumption and save you money every day on your fuel. Um, so what, I was trying to, what I'm proposing is that we pair that as a package together with a government's token um, so that they also like because it's like a ridiculous return on investment like 600 percent roi to just put this device on your tricycle but that's not the way tricycle operators think because they're living day to day like not even paycheck to paycheck day to day um so like i mean you you could you you make your you would make your money back six times in a year if you did this but the idea of actually spending like two weeks worth of your paycheck is like unthinkable for them um so basically if we pair it together then we can we can kind of attract uh attract a bit of a pool that we can then start investing and use like with professional investors to basically improve their lives and get like like uh canadian union of public employees has an investment fund ontario teachers federation have an investment fund build something like that in the crypto sphere for the tricycle drivers and there's millions of them across the country uh and that's just the philippines i'm sure uh many african countries of indonesia of course have a similar uh economic framework so it, the the yeah but uh but i mean you could do you could do millions of people in the philippines just just talking about tricycle drivers um so that's the gist of it and uh so um, I, I will kind of go from here into s talking about how um, I'm the kind of guy who, when I see something that I uh, am aligned with um, and I decide I'm going to throw my shoulder behind it, uh, I'm, I, I tend to kind of look at the playing field and uh, figure out how I can make my efforts uh, go further or as far as I can. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy with where the voting is sitting right now. Uh, I, I, I very like precious plastics uh, and and grassroots economic commons and gravity Dow. Those are great projects, and they've got many many very active members. I'm basically flying solo here, um, so I, I've got I've got no reservations at all about the fact that I'm not making the finals. Um, but as a as a as a political campaigner, uh, I've I've I, I'm. I'm gonna. I've got. I've got a written thing that I'm about to post, which uh, which will explain more. But as a political campaigner, um, I really like the idea of quadratic vote submissions and contestants being able to merge their submissions. So I'm about to post publicly a uh, a demonstration, like a proposal, along with an attestation, where I'm actually. Uh, should I should I say it now, Chris? Should I do it here, or should I put it in do it in writing? I'm actually seeing Chris the video no. for the first time. <laughs> I think you have, you have to say it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah go for uh, it. Yeah. Go, for it. go to the beast. All right, so so basically, what I'm about to uh, publish um, for the community's consideration and conversation is the idea that Toda Todal wants to merge into uh, Open Cultivars Common, uh, and and uh, I would invite you all to uh, have a look at the proposal. And the mechanism and the script that I've written that kind of shows how it works, and uh, and maybe we can have a bit more of a detailed conversation about it at a later date. But I won't post it. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get through the voting party first. I, what, one thing that I'm really conscious of is I don't want to start throwing curveballs and having a bunch of arrows go and getting directed at Tam. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. And I appreciate the ingenuity of the solution you're proposing. 
Uh, just want to be cognizant that uh, the, the point that I'm making is the idea of emerging votes is very cool, but it does not necessarily take into um, account the voter consent. And I think if we can sort of round that, you know, square that, uh, then it would make a lot of sense. But I encourage your very novel uh, and ingenious proposal to be shared with the public because I think it was uh, a testament to like, you know, scrappiness. It's very, very cool. Okay, um, so I have, I'm gonna ask uh, I guess some more questions. Just, and just to add to that, um, I, 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 uh, I agree with uh, Joseph's uh, comment about this being a collaborative thing. Um, but but just because it's a collaborative game doesn't mean you don't play hard. Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested in seeing. I haven't seen the proposal yet, so I'd be interested in seeing the overlap between open cultivars and Todao and um, how the the proposal looks. So I I also look forward to reading it. Um, and just to maybe ask some more questions, um, I think that. Um, uh, the the next question will be for all of the uh, all of the nominations. So Joseph mentioned that uh, precious plastics already feels like a commons, and that um, uh, I'm I'm curious for the other nominations for uh, grassroots economics and open cultivars and Todao. Do you find the same thing? Do you feel that the community already feels like a commons? And then I, so I'm going to ask a few questions. So do you already feel like the community feels like a commons? And do you, um, do you see commons um, within the community? If the whole community doesn't feel like a commons, are there parts of your communities that you think operate as commons? A commons basically just being a, um, I just, for a very simple definition, uh, a resource, an active community, and a set of protocols by which the community uh, participate in uh, in using and uh, sustaining that uh, that resource. And uh, maybe um, I'll pass to uh, Chris if you'd like to answer that question first. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I think that the initial sort of focus um, lines of research that open uh, well, what is really copy left cultivars has been pursuing definitely has a, a kind of commons feel and that it's a it's a cannabis um, copyleft cannabis so it has a, a collection of cannabis you know enthusiasts and growers who um, who I mean I spend a lot of my time doing legal education um, not that far off of what happens when I have to explain creative commons as well so the mere concept of intellectual property commoning I think is still a little stilted just for like the general public but that being said this this group i think certainly feels like a commons in that regard um in terms of our broader collaborations we haven't yet kind of framed the the way to share our intellectual property uh, such that it's already sort of in in force but the there's broad commitment to principles of kind of open source um and commoning from from that angle um, and then as well in, in sort of the social corporate social responsibility sphere, those who I think came out of that movement and want to think about how to create more of a commons around a kind of like human right or something um, are thinking about it in sort of a commons framework, but it's less active in terms of an economy that functions as such yet. Cool, and maybe uh, I could pass to Will if you uh, are up to answering the same question. Do you feel that the community already has a commons, feels like a commons, or maybe some subsets of the, the grassroots economics community already sort of operate as a commons? Yeah. Oh, it's um, you're off mute, but there's no volume. Yeah. I think we're gonna get it. <laughs> Not yet. No. Okay, well, yeah. Is there? Yes, we got yeah. we got value. So yeah, like the mutual service provision is kind of our main like around together and say we're offering X, Y, and Z services. Um, and then that uh, 
choice and then creating contracts around that service provision like the currency. And um, we've been doing that with communities urban. Like, uh, communities are doing that together and then they're also providing service, let's say, to other communities and same thing. So we have a service voucher that is redeemable as payment for our services that we provide as grassroots economics. Uh, structure so far of grassroots economics has been a foundation or sort of like hierarchical in a way, like we haven't really created a commons within the organization per se. It's more about, uh, it's sort of like um, a, a pretty typical sort of like um, hierarchical kind of structure. So that's something I want and, and just you know, like thinking in, in that broad spectrum of, you know, organizations and individuals and communities offering services together and looking at that type of a commons more and more. Okay, thanks for that. I apologize for the dog situation. <laughs> she's okay. Somebody just walked through the door and she's barking at them, but they're supposed to be here. Everything's okay. Uh, so maybe just uh, um, Grariel, if I could pass to you and ask the same question. And to about Toe Dao. Uh, Grariel, can you hear me okay? Oh, so, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I can hear you. So, yeah, is it my turn? I, I wasn't sure if you were talking to me. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I don't have a, like, I mean, I don't have a community to speak of uh, at this time. Um, the, like, the, the, the Filipinos, like, Eleanor Ostrom, a lot of Eleanor Ostrom's field studies and field data that she used to basically overturn the tragedy of the commons in the academic world was field studies from many places and a lot of them were from the Philippines. Um, so, uh, so from that perspective, the commons is an inherent part of Filipino culture, especially in the more rural areas, um, which of course has, uh, has, been, has been overprinted by certain aspects of Spanish colonialism and then overprinted by our modern age where United States has kind of the, been the, the world hegemon. Um, but, uh, but I guess one thing I can add to that, um, I got my first tattoo recently. Uh, it's hard to see. So that's... I can't it's quite hard read to see, it. but that's the first... Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, an alphabet called Kawi, um, and it's the oldest, uh, so far the oldest example of writing found in the Philippines, uh, from around 822 AD. Um, so that would be like even, even, even Muslims, like if there were, if there was any Islam in the Philippines by that point, it would have been like the odd trader and explorer. Definitely not like colonial presence or anything like that <clears throat> so this is a this is like a sanskrit based alphabet or a brahmic brahmic script um from back in a time when india was more of the the regional power from the time um but there, there was a certain amount of like sp spanish like writing and stuff about the philippines that kind of talked about them as not really having that much culture or ability to read and write and stuff like that um, but now there's archaeological evidence that's coming into to start to uh, show that that wasn't the case. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean that's that's my basic answer is that the Filipino culture still has elements of the commons in it inherently, which also has the Spanish history and the the the, the modern history to kind of balance against. So, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Thanks for that. And uh, Joseph, uh, the comment was actually sparked. The question was actually sparked by your comments, but I'd love to give you also three minutes to uh, to share your reflections and uh, answers. There you go. Yeah. Uh, let me see. It. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. See it. Cool. Well. Um, yeah, so you mentioned a Commons is a, you know, a group of people that uh, shared resource 
and then a community around it. And our commons, the shared resource, is really the intellectual property around how to um, make a small scale recycling project. So we, this is our community platform, which is our, our software uh, that powers our community, also open source. Uh, but this is where you can see all the learning information about how to yeah, start a project from like the basics of plastics to building uh, an open source machine to creating a business, all this stuff, different stuff. One of my favorite parts of this commons is actually our uh, design. So we have like a logo generator where people can make their own logo. And that kind of like shows what uh, type of organization they are in our ecosystem. And it's like hundreds of, of organizations have used our logo generator and they've like staked their, you know, um, part of the commons in a way. And yeah, I think it's just a really powerful thing to see on the internet, people just d uh, dipping into this commons and using it. And if you also take a look at our, another good place to check out is our map. And that's where you can see like these different organizations where they are. And then another interesting part is our, you can look, just look on Instagram and see how many people have hashtag precious plastic. And then the hashtag is almost like a thing that uh, ties together the comments because nobody owns the hashtag. You know, nobody, you know, owns the hashtag precious plastic. It's all of the community. And that's how you can see really the power of this idea um, of precious plastic. It's not a company, it's not an organization, it's like an idea. The fact that, precious, that plastic is precious. So that's kind of um, my explanation of our comments. And yeah, that's it. Cool, I have another question around that. Um, can you see this commons being broad enough to include uh, I mean, does, does it already include all kinds of recycling plastic initiatives or primarily the open uh, open hardware uh, devices? Yeah, there, there's the interesting thing is like there's people who don't even use the hardware that still consider themselves in the comments oh. as part of the project. Um, yeah, I think that's really interesting. It's like you can affiliate with the idea, with the comments, without needing actually the hardware. You know, it started as an open hardware project, and that's, you know, the heart of who we are. But it's not the only thing. You know, there's there's techniques, how to make items that have nothing to do, with, it's like where you shape it with your hands, like there's no machinery involved. Um, it's really a commons around solving a problem. Hardware is a big piece of that, but it's not the only piece. There's a, there's a lot around it. And I just want to make a plug that's, so we have a foundation where Precious Plastic is just one project, it's one commons, but we actually have other projects that have, are other commons, that if this project would be successful, I could see us spinning out other commons. We have another one around fixing uh, your clothes, so you, there's not a waste around fast fashion, and then another project around sustainable living, where we're prototyping uh, a sustainable way of living. You should check out Project Camp on YouTube. Cool. Thanks for that, Joseph. I really appreciate that. That is um, a, yeah, a new angle, actually. It makes me uh, see the the nomination a little deeper as uh, all things plastic and in yeah. any way that it can be recycled. That's a very broad, um, broad scope. Cool. Totally. Um, I have a question for Will and Grassroots Economics, and it is uh, essentially... Um, is there any part of the current community currencies initiatives that are on chain? And do you see advantages to having uh, any of those initiatives be on chain versus off chain versus the, the organization um, maybe having the benefits of, um, uh, of, uh, of being a sustainable funding mechanism as a commons? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. 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 They're, they're, they're all on chain. Um, we actually just we just launched a humanitarian blockchain like a few weeks ago. Um, I mean, there's still a lot to do around that. We're also looking at uh, different architectures like into Cosmos and things like that. But um, yeah, they're all, they're all on chain. And so that is one of the goals is to have really radical transparency so that people can look at the impacts, um, look at supply chains, to, you know, be able to actually track and create like impact certificates and, and you know, show what communities are actually doing um, in, in different
different ways and sort of indexing those against sustainable development goals and and bringing in uh, you know different types of like impact investors and people who are interested in supporting those comments and so like you know holding one of these vouchers from the community you're really you're investing into the utility of that community and um, because there's demolage you're also paying a, a you know fee back into the community fund uh, but that also gives you a, a right potentially to vote on issues in that community as well. Um, so working on those voting systems, that's kind of you know one of the one of the big pushes as well. So transparency around voting, transparency around the circulation and you know deployment, and also the connections between all these systems. Um, we also you know are really you know, one of the reasons we want to do bridging as well, so that we can. Um, create access to liquidity pools so people can create things like augmented bonding curves that connect these to other types of crypto assets as well. And, and just for, you know, uh, it's not just about community groups, it's also for businesses um, to come together into groups, but also even by themselves, like grassroots economics created a service voucher, right? In a way that's sort of like a mini ICO, right? We have a utility token that we sell uh, in kind, but also for cash for our own services uh, as well. And so, the community of currencies connecting to each other on chain. And um, I mean, we started with paper vouchers for years. Having a distributed ledger is a lot more secure um, and resilient than having a single seed based. Um, we're not really like I, I kind of don't like the term decentralized. I think it's sort of like a it, it's an interesting ideal, but I, I prefer just and right now our region only has probably twenty maximum in Africa with different sort of humanitarian partners. It's a nonprofit. Uh, uh, blockchain in that we just give out gas um, to people using um, meant to profits. So, uh, but it's but it's a lot more secure and open, and you can create protocols that connect it connect it to to other systems. And we're also working on mesh networks, and running you know nodes in a mesh network. Cool. So the audio is. Um just so we can we can hear you but maybe not everything it was it was work doable but um yeah a little tricky i think when you move the laptop is when it sounds like <laughs> you're taking off <laughs> yeah, yeah i have to talk to my work as long as i don't move it yeah it's like okay yeah it's, it's, it's better yeah it's better. Okay, uh, we have about eight minutes left, and um, I'd like to do a little rubber hits the road um, for grassroots economics and precious plastics. Since you guys uh, are two of the uh, the nominations in the top, um, I actually want to you know talk about the initialization and the hatch phase. And uh, basically say, you know, do you already have in mind who the stewards would be? Like if you uh, do win the nomination prize, do you already have in mind the people that we would start speaking with uh, to do the initialization of this project? And then for the fundraising, um, of course, there would be the trusted seed who, who would be invited to co-fund into the uh, co-vest into the commons. But do you have any other um, uh, idea like community and or organizations that you'd have in mind to also fund and uh, I'm gonna set a timer for about uh, three three and uh, three minutes three minutes so I don't know why it took me so long to get that out and maybe I'll pass it to you first Joseph to get us started yes thank you for the question so yes concerning the hash phase um, so we have a, a small team like six people um, that I would see being part of that hatch phase. We have a, a ring of about 50 very, very close community collabor collaborators that I would see also part of that hatch phase. Um, yeah, it seemed pretty close because you really need to know the project well, um, be able to, and we want really the, you know, the strongest supporters and stewards of the project to be involved in the hatch phase. And for the larger fundraising phase, of course we have 
our existing community, which is quite big, it's quite known project. Um, as well as yeah, we have we have various um, sub- organizational supporters, people who are uh, in the Web three world who also support our project that we would reach out to for that phase. I think we could be quite successful in that. Um, we are now both based in Portugal, and there's a lot of support around. So yeah, that's kind of how I would see it. But I, I would see it initially it's going to be our small team that's involved with the hatch in the. Um, that's going to be a very important part. And we do have some funds to uh, put in there uh, from our core team, core team members. Okay, thanks for sharing that, Joseph. And um, Will, would you like to uh, respond to the same question? Sure. me that the audio is coming in very uh, staccato or is it also for others as well it's, it's coming in and out. yeah i'm not i'm not able to catch um the full um meaning of the full the full sentence i don't know if there's anything i can do with this maybe you want, you want to give it a try maybe one last uh, last time. I'll try stopping sharing my screen and seeing if that helps. Is it? Is it any? It's hard to tell. About like three out of five words come through. Yeah, I, this is my first time hearing words. Okay. Um. No, no, Will, I'm afraid, I'm afraid it's not working. I'm afraid it's too hard to understand the full sentences because um, it comes in and out. Um, If you feel up to just uh, uh, typing your reply or parts of your reply on the Commons Prize channel, we can, I can read it out. (laughs) We can, we can do something like that too. Um, okay, uh, we have maybe three minutes left, and I want to also ask uh, Grayel and Chris, you guys signaled that you're interested in merging. Are there other nominations that you're interested in merging with and, uh, and on other nominations that you think would fit well into this new concept that you have of the commons that would um, sort of uh, embrace multiple nominations? I'll ask uh Grayel to start and uh, maybe just give you guys the last three minutes to share your thoughts on that. Okay, um, kind of raining, so I don't know how well you'll be able to hear me. Um, but what I like about quadratic voting so far, and I don't know how many votes you've done via quadratic voting up until this point, but this is the first time I've participated as both a voter and a contestant. Um, so that from that perspective, like I'm learning and I, and I just kind of took a look at it and I said, thinking as a contestant, how would why, how would I want to try and play this uh, in order like and, and how, how would how would as a voter, how would I want to play this if I wasn't a contestant? Um, and thinking of like collaborative games, like board games and stuff that are more collaborative in nature than than adversarial. Um, OK, is, is something wrong, Tab? 
No, it's just we have one minute left. Uh, and I, I was oh, okay. wondering if you wanted to share the other nominations that you think would be a good uh, merged commons altogether. If there are other nominations than uh, open cultivars. Uh, okay, so, sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, it's it's loud. Like I, I, I was just talking about my reasoning for why I wanted to do it, because we're going to be putting it in writing, and it's way too long to talk about. And actually, Chris and I haven't actually developed a post-merge proposal anyway yet so okay all right thanks for that. and chris i don't know if you want to say one or two words in closing as well great yeah no um definitely you know sort of a, a agree with um Grail in terms of where we're at in, in process um from our end because we're sort of just a, a hack a way of programming intellectual property at at some level um our interests i think broadly align with any type of sort of biodiversity kind of protecting the ecology. Um, and in that way, I think we view our license framework as something that could work well um, with, with many different DAOs. Um, but with TODAO um, in particular, it, it's something where, you know, for instance, maybe the uh, IP could ensure some royalty pool um, to help fund. Uh, but anyways, I'll pause there, but thank you so much. Cool. That was excellent. And actually, that gave me deeper insight into this idea of what you guys want to merge. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Will, Joseph, uh, Grael, and Chris, and thank Ivy and Maria as well for joining. This was probably the most intimate voting party we've had so far. And uh, I look forward to sharing this with all of the trusted seed so that they can get a uh, firsthand account of uh, the, the nominations that they're voting for. Thank you so much for joining today. And uh, best of luck to all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Bye.